Hey, hello, good evening. Good evening, teacher. Hi, Hashem. Hi. How was today? Uh, only a study. Study from the screen computing. <laughs> okay, you study. Where do you study? In the university? No, it's, it's, yes, it's a science, science uh, policeman. Ah, really? Yeah. Okay. So I you, am. yes, you are a you're a policeman, a police yes. officer. Oh, yes. that's great! But you are taking a course. Sorry, I see <laughs> recording the. No, I I are... can't do a speak. <laughs> No, oh, it's okay. Are you are you <laughs> are you taking a, a special course in this moment? Yes, uh, so take uh, a science uh, mm -hmm. course, Crimi course, criminology. Yes. No, it's a academy. It's a university. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, police. Okay. All right. It's a career. It's a ca career. Career, yes. career. Okay, mm -hmm. good. And you, uh, how long, how much time do you have uh, to study? One year, two years? Uh, three years. Three years. Okay. Yes. And missing, after... missing two years. But that is like the, how do you call this? The, uh, the, the PNC, but there was a school, right? The university? Academia, Sorry, the... Academia de Pol... What was the name? Teacher. Uh-huh. I'm sorry, but but the uh, cor corporation English corporativo charging you do this. <laughs> He's charging what? Yes, yeah. It's a confidence. Ah, oh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, good. I'm really sorry about that. Okay, good. And do you play any sports, practice any sports? Yes, I practice in karate. karate. Okay. Karate. Mm -hmm. uh -huh, good. And are, uh, do you have any belt? Like white, black, blue? Black. Okay, black. Black. Oh, wow, you're dangerous. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. yeah, that's nice. Okay, good. And how long have you practiced uh, karate? It, uh, until 21 years old okay. uh, right now i have i am i am 41 okay 20 uh, years 20, 20 20 years yeah wow that's a lot that's yes. a lot a lot of practice a lot of experience too yes okay so you have many medals too in participations yes in competitions yes. yes okay that's good that's nice Excellent. Yes, thank you. All right, congratulations. And I'm sorry, thank okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hello, Giovanni. How are you? Hello, good evening, teacher. I'm so far so good. Thank you so much for asking. Hi, Dan. Okay, I'm fine. Just, uh, uh, you know, the normal day. Nothing, nothing, uh, let's say, uh, out of the context. So normal things, classes, work, traffic. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, you know, have fun for some moments. Uh, <laughs> eat, eat. <laughs> okay. So, oh, wonderful. Yeah, I think it's, it was, it was, I mean, I can't complain, right? I can't complain about the day. It was good. And, you know, the time is flying for today is Wednesday. This is the, yeah, definitely. This is the, the hump day of the week. Okay. Because you get Monday, Tuesday, then Wednesday. And then Thursday, Friday, and then you begin to go <laughs> down. That's why they yeah. call they call fr uh, Wednesday the hump day of the week. Okay, so mm. like the when you get to the top, and then you go down okay, in the five days. Okay, so that and is the mm -hmm. yes, that's the oh, they wonderful. call it they call it a hump hump. I call, I'm gonna write it here. And I remember that once I was told that regarding to Wednesday, it's called like homey day, right? Uh huh. Hump day. Mm hmm. Actually, I guess it's the same. Hump. 
hump. Mm -hmm. It's like the, you know, like the camels, the camels in the desert, they have mm -hmm. a hump. Mm -hmm. Okay, on the back. <laughs> that is the name. Hum. Oh, wonderful. Yes. Uh, teacher, actually, uh, I wanted to talk to you. Uh -huh. I had a, a little situation and I wanted to explain it because when we were contacted about to the English Comparativo eh, for this new season, I told the representative that I have a situation. I have some activities uh, with, um, with the church and I want to be able to be in class for a week. Actually, okay. I want to be able to connect from, let me see, from Monday 4th to Thursday 7th. Okay. That will be for a fourth date in here for classes, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, and I told them and and they told me some, some suggestions regarding that. Nevertheless, I know that you are the teacher and I wanted to let you know about it. Okay, good. No, and thank you for, for letting me know, okay? But the important thing is that they also know because they they know exactly how to handle okay situations like this, you know, with the with the times that you have to be in class and everything, the percentage that you have to cover. I think uh, that is more or less the limit, you know. I think you will be exactly in the limit, you know, of uh, of time that you have allotted. To me, oh really? Actually, I, I didn't know that they have a, a limit. Yes, actually, there as is. you know, I I try to do my best to be on time every yes. single day, and this is the first time that I want to be able to to attend classes. No, it's okay. I, I prefer I do all all as is possible to attend it. Okay, no, no problem. Don't worry. It's not possible. Yes, <laughs> yeah, try to you know try to uh, uh also comply with the times uh with the platform right so that you are. Uh, probably you know filling out the exercises in advance and mm -hmm. then you know that's the uh, yeah, that's the catch <laughs> that's, the, uh, that's the the idea there right so that you can wonderful you, that, yes. I mean, how you can handle the situation oh wonderful okay. thank you so much for, for understanding no, i will do it no problem okay good so we have a uh, jenny melissa and wendy okay Good. So we have this one here. Let me share the screen. Okay, so we were Yesterday, remember we were talking about the the adjectives, right? That uh, we can use to to describe ourselves, right? Uh, for example, the words that describe some characteristics uh, of our personality, right? So I guess this is the probably some of the most common words. Like when you have, you know, ambitious, argumentative, right, uh, carefree, and then you have calm, scientious, naive, pragmatic, and all those words. Then uh, today we're going to have a similar topic, you know, always talking about closes, but this time it's going to be closes that we use to express regrets, okay? Regrets and hypothetical situations, right? Situations which should have in past participle. Uh, what is uh, a regret, okay? What is a regret? This word we have here. Okay, a regret. Obviously, is when we feel sorry for something that we did or something that we didn't do. Okay, so then uh, after that, there is some kind of sorrow. You know, we are sorry, okay, because we did something bad, okay, or probably because we didn't do something good. Okay, so in that case, we have a regret. 
And then also when we have a uh, hypothetical situations, when we think about the past, and then we wonder how had life been different if, uh, let's say, uh, uh, we would have made a different decision in a specific moment in our life, right? For example, uh, if I hadn't uh, learned English, okay, I would have studied, um, I don't know, engineering or maybe medicine or maybe uh, an architecture or something like that, right? But that is a hypothetical situation, right? Because I don't know exactly what I uh, would have done if I hadn't learned or studied English, okay? So this is, for example, when we're talking about understanding practice, expressing regrets, and a hypothesis, right, of any situation in our life. In the in the material that I sent you today in the in the chat, uh, there are uh, there are some time clauses, some time clauses like after, when, before, as soon as, and after that there are some others with the different types of conditional sentences, right? So you have the conditional sentences when we use, for example. If, okay, there is a condition. There are five types of conditional sentences, but in the material, I only included three. Because for the moment, I think is sufficient. It's more than enough. Now let's listen to the lady. And uh, she's going to speak a little bit about uh, the regrets in conditional sentences. And if you have questions, you can ask me at the end. Teacher, I can hear. I can't. Yes, okay, yeah. We're gonna fix that in a minute. Okay, I'm gonna check the volume. Let me omit this one. Play it from the beginning. Here we go. Should you have learned English before? Stay and learn how to express regrets and describe hypothetical no, yes. situations. Page 75, exercise yes. eight, okay. grammar focus. Expressing regret <clears throat> and describing hypothetical situations. Expressing regret. I should have studied something more practical when I was in college. I shouldn't have waited so long to choose a major. Describing hypothetical situations. If I'd been more ambitious in college, I could have learned another language. If I hadn't wasted so much money last year, I would have my own apartment now. When we want to express regrets, we need to follow the rule. Subject plus should have plus past participle. It's important for you to know that we use should have to speculate about or imagine things that did or didn't happen. For example, I should have paid attention to what I ate as a kid. When you want to describe a hypothetical situation, we need to use this rule. If plus subject plus had, plus past participle, comma, subject, plus could, or would have, plus past participle. Notice the use of could or would have shows what didn't happen. For example, if I hadn't wasted so much money last year, I would have bought my own apartment. In other words, I didn't buy the house because I had no money. Can you put yourself in the following hypothetical situations? 
write them on our discussion box. Press regress and describe hypothetical situations. Page 75. Exercise 8. Grammar Focus. Expressing regret and describing hypothetical situations. Expressing regret. Okay. So as you can see in this uh, slide, in this image, uh, it says expressing uh, a regret, right? Regret, as I told you before, is when we are sorry about something. And then we say, I should have, okay? Should have. Okay, this is the important thing. I should, then we have the auxiliary verb have, okay? And then we're going to use the past participle of the verb. And then we say, I should have studied then we are expressing something that we are sorry. There is a sorrow because we didn't do it or because we did it, okay? So I should have studied something more practical when I was in college, okay? You say, I should have studied something more practical when I was in college. I shouldn't have waited so long to choose a mayor. Okay, what happens when you want to buy a car, okay? Then, uh, and you are sometimes, you have the money and then you see the car that you want, the car that you like. And you say, oh, that's the car that I want. And there are many places, okay, uh, where they sell cars. And then you go to the first place, you see the car, and they say, okay, I want to buy this car. And they say, how much is this car? Uh, $7,000. You go over the car, you look over the car, you check, you examine and say, oh, yes, nice, I take it. You pay $7,000. Okay, you take your car. And then when you're driving around, you see the same car in another place, but $2,000 cheaper. $5,000. And then you say, oh my God, I shouldn't have bought the car in the first place. Okay. I should have waited to check all the places around the area. Okay. Then in that way, these are regrets because we feel, oh, I made a mistake. It happens, right? Sometimes happens that we, we buy a pair of shoes in one store. Probably we pay more. But then a couple of days after, there is a special sale. And the same shoes are 25% off. And they are cheaper. And they say, oh, we should have waited three, day, three more days. I should have waited a little bit longer. But you never know, right? That, that is going to happen. And this, these are, you know, some, let's say, uh, some regrets. There are some other regrets that are probably more, uh, more serious, right? Or that we probably, we made a, a, the wrong decision, right? Uh, for example, when you say, you stop studying when you were a teenager, maybe, okay, when, and then we said, after 15, 20 years, then we find a situation that we need the diploma, we need a degree, and we don't have it. And they say, oh, I should, I should have studied when I was younger, okay? I should have finished my studies when I was, uh, let's say, uh, a teenager. So these are regrets, okay? And then we have a hypothetical situation. This is the other structure. If I hadn't wasted so much money last year, I would have my own apartment now. Okay, this is, you know, it's a similar uh, regret, but it's also a hypothetical situation. You don't know if uh, the second close, I would have my own apartment now. It is, uh, let's say, uh, 
something that could have happened. Okay, so that is hypothesis only. Maybe yes, maybe not. Okay, uh, before I continue saying something, I would like to know if these two uh, ideas of expressing regrets and describing hypothetical situations are clear. If you remember these grammar structures or if they are new for you. Sure. Well, yes, first, Oscar. Uh -huh. About the, the last uh, sentence that says, if I hadn't wasted, mm -hmm. um, I have a new one that uh, it, this is my own case. For example, mm -hmm. I, I like um, uh, to, to, to learn about repairing uh, the electronic devices. Mm -hmm. Okay. So can, can I say, for example, in this case, if I hadn't, uh, if I hadn't uh, put off, put off uh, learning uh, about repeating the electronic devices uh, uh, three years ago, I will be able to uh, to repair my own devices uh, nowadays. Yes, does it make sense? Makes sense. Only that's the last the result clause. Uh, I would be. I would have been. I would have I, been. Oh, yes. Okay. Because remember that you say I would have. Oh no, sorry, sorry. This is the one because you're using the result, right? So you say I would have a, a repair my own uh, devices. Then yes, that's but correct. My question is, can I say, for example, here in the example we have a wasted. We have the we have the the verb in the as participle, mm -hmm. but in my case, I, I use it as an, uh, uh, with the I form. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I said, if I hadn't put off, uh -huh, put off. Uh, learning, can I say learning or learn? No learning, okay. Uh, how can I tell this? Uh, the structure is if I hadn't put off, if I hadn't wasted, if I hadn't studied, uh, if I hadn't, uh, let's say, uh, continue, if I hadn't continue learning or to learn. So the next verb doesn't have to be in past participle. Okay, in the structure, you only need the auxiliary verb have. Okay, and then the next verb is going to be in past participle. And if we need another one, it's going to be in infinitive form or in ing form, depending on the on the rule. For example, put off, then you can say put off learning, okay, or put off uh, let's say uh, working, okay. So you can use that sometimes too, or infinitive, or sometimes you can use the ing form, okay. But it's only this one that you need to uh, place or use in the past participle. Oh, okay. all right. So in, in my case, the uh, the put off is, is already included in the structure, right? Correct. Yes, remember uh, that the past participle, the put is an irregular verb. That is the same thing in the same form in the three verbs. Put present, put past, and put in past participle. So that's why it sounds and sounds similar. Okay, so then that's your verb. If I hadn't put off, if I hadn't postponed, that would be a synonym. Okay. All right. All right. Per perfect. Okay. So then this is, you know, uh, a yes, you want Yeah, all in addition, yes, no, we need to double check in every single situation. Mm -hmm. and for example, now, I guess that this was uh, something that matched so well. Nevertheless, we need to double check that a verb will be in past participle because it's not all the time that will match in this situation. Always we need to verify that the verb will be in past, past, past participle. Yes, Absolutely. that's correct, right? Uh, so then uh, this is one thing, and depending also on the kind of hypothesis that you want to make, right? So that's, there are some verbs that much better than others. Okay, in this in the expression regret is similar, right? We use should as the modal verb 
half, which is in this case, the uh, let's say the auxiliary verb, like in present perfect, and then the past participle of the verb. You say, I shouldn't have, a, I should have a studied something more practical. And then you say, when I was in college. Okay, so right now, oh, he said, I'm sleepy, I'm tired. And they said, then now, why am I so tired? Oh yeah, last night after my last class, I stayed up watching TV and I saw a movie. So I went to bed like around 1 a.m. And then I got up at four. So then what is my regret? What could I regret? Help me with my regret. Imagine I stay up until 1 a.m. I got up at four. And I stay until 1 a.m. because I was watching a movie. Can we say, uh, we, can we put a, um, a verb with a chair and after uh, that example, if I hadn't wasted, wasted uh, watching a movie all the um, time? Mm, not in this case, because uh, what did I wait? What did I waste? I waste. I wasted um, watching a moving all the um, night. But, but uh, what? So that but what, did I, what did I waste? Time. Um, My time. Exactly right. And time is a noun. In that case, you say, for example, if I hadn't wasted my time. Um, watching okay if i had why is it my time before uh, another verb uh, there is a, a noun before not always okay it depends no, on no. that in this case yes because uh you need to put the information right if i hadn't wasted what my time my time doing watching what a movie. Watching, watching a that... movie uh -huh. for the all the all night yes i could have Rested. I, would have... I could have yeah. rested more. Yes. Okay. Thank you. M may okay. I say in addition, I would have the energy to work today? Yeah, exactly. I would have more energy right now. Okay. Oh. I, I would be more awake. Okay. You know, more energetic but right now. So I'm feeling down because of that. Okay. Yes. Good. That's nice. This is the reasoning is good. In this case, you need a lot of reasoning because uh, when you use the sentences more than examples from like this, you're gonna use it with real situations, right? Because a hypothetic issue is only something that we lived before and that we think that it could be different now if we had made a different decision in the moment in the past. So this is what we think, right? For example, um, if I hadn't, uh, let's say if I hadn't, if I hadn't come back, if I hadn't come, okay, remember that we have past tense, come, came, come. Uh, if I hadn't come back to El Salvador, uh, oh my God, I don't remember, 30 years ago, then I, I wouldn't have gotten married, okay, with my actual wife, probably in another country with somebody else, okay, but then I came back, and then I got married here, so then uh, I, uh, let's like say I, I got married here because of that, so if I hadn't stayed too long when I came back, also, you know, I I would have probably live single again okay so then these are for example some situations but hypothesis that i don't know right probably yes probably no you never know okay no questions for the moment now look at the other one because i want you to have this one so for, for example uh, uh talking about the, the same the the last sentence within uh, with the second part that says I will have my own apartment now 
is, is not necessary uh, to 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 include uh, a past participle uh, better right after the auxiliary have. It, it that, all depends on the, on the context. Uh -huh. Depends on the context and what you want to express. In this case, no, because I would have, if I hadn't wasted so much money, I would have my own apartment now, right? So then I would, I would, then you can also use, I would have, a, let's say, a, I would have bought, okay? I would have bought my own apartment. You can probably add also the, the, the verb, right? But sometimes it sounds like redundant, right? Because if you have, if you would have bought your own apartment, or I would have my own apartment, is similar meaning, and uh, there is a there is a saying in English say the economy of the language. Remember that in the when we speak, we usually try to use less words to express our ideas and not to go around the bushes. Okay, explaining or saying so many words, something uh, a speech that will be too wordy. Okay, full of words and we don't say anything, just like continuous, right? So that what we like them instead of that to be more concise and precise. Yes, Marlene. Teacher, I want to know if I is if it's correct to say if I've been studying more time in the college, I could have finished my career. If I had, or, oh, if okay. I had studied, study it. If I had studied, um, okay. There is bean. A, mm -hmm. The bin is when you use the progressive form. Let me see. Mm. Probably, if you had, if you use, let me think. Uh, if I had. No, but it's going to be the same. If I had continued, if I had continued studying, okay, if I had studied or if I had continued studying, okay, then you can, in that case, it's the same, but in both cases, you are saying that you stopped your studies. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you can say if I had continued, okay, studying, continue then. studying. Mm-hmm. Or if I had studied, uh, what was the com your compliment? If I had studied more time in the college, okay, I if could I... have finished my career. Okay, if I had continued studying, okay, in college, mm -hmm. I would have finished my career. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, okay. uh, because if I had been studying, it's like if you never were. But in your case, it's you were, but you stopped. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. Okay. Then, uh, for mm -hmm. example, suppose, a, yeah, just uh, a minute, Giovanni, and I'll give, and, uh, I'll give you a chance. For example, if you say uh, there was a, a, you know, I was watching a game in the soccer field today in the school. Okay. And... And I and then I, I was sitting. Uh, let's say I was sitting behind the the goalie. Okay, and then uh, I stood up because I wanted to get some uh, some water, so I went to get some water, and when I moved, you know, the one of the uh, players shoot the ball, and hit the hit the chair where I was. Okay. If I had been sitting, okay, if I had been sitting in that in that chair in that moment, the ball would have hit me. Okay. In that case, I can use if I had been sitting. But fortunately, okay. in that moment I got up and then I and it's true. And then uh, uh the ball didn't hit me. Okay. So then there, okay. there are some situations like Oscar was saying, depending on the context, where we will be able to use the progressive form with been, and mm -hmm. in other cases, it will probably make no sense. Or mm, it could be correct, 
but we could probably change the meaning. Okay. Mm -hmm. Probably it's not exactly the idea that you want to express. All right. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Yes, Giovanni. Okay, thank you. Just to clarify it about it, it's being, as you know, it's a past participle of verb be. That mm -hmm. means ser o estar, right? Yeah. And that's why in this situation, we're not able to use have been because we are going, or we wanted to say in this situation, the verb that is studied and it's not a characteristic about us because we want to say that we have studied. Mm -hmm. But it's not like, um, for example, as, as the teacher said, right? If he had been sitting, or if I had been a doctor, yeah, if I had been a young or something like that, way that are applies and specific characteristics for me for myself. But in these situations, um, are characteristics about to the studies. If I had studied, um, in this situation, mm -hmm. we want to express the the verb that is studied, but it's not about us. Yes, that. Okay. okay good. Thank you. Yes, Carla. Tell us. Teacher, I, I try to express a negative situation, but I don't know if it is correct. For example, I say, I shouldn't have stopped studying English when I was a teenager. Can I use the verb studying uh, followed stopped? I shouldn't have stopped studying, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, there are some ver there are there, there are some verbs that can be used uh, followed by ing forms, germs, or infinitive forms, and the meaning is uh, let's say the they have a meaning. There are some verbs that can be used in the two forms, but the meaning is different. Okay, for example, if I said I shouldn't have stopped to study when I was a teenager. So that means that you were a teenager, you stopped to study, okay? And then if I say, I shouldn't have stopped studying, is that means that you quit. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have quit. I shouldn't have quit study. Uh, the verb stop followed by infinitive has one meaning and followed by ing or gerund has a different meaning. I just, no, yesterday I stopped to smoke. I was teaching a class and I stopped to smoke. In that case, it means that I was doing an action, teaching the class, I stopped the class to smoke, okay? But if I say, uh, I stopped smoking 20 years ago, it means that I quit. So what you are saying in your sentence when you use ing is that uh, many years ago when you were a teenager, you quit your English studies. And now you have taken the classes again. So the sentence is correct, okay? But if you use it with two, then you will change the meaning, okay? okay. Nice. So you see that's, a, I mean, probably this is one of the issues at these levels when we start playing with, with verbs, right? With verbs that have a gerund form and infinitive form. Okay, so I'm going to say I like playing or I like to play. In this case, you can use the two forms and the meaning is the same. Okay, but if I say I remember taking and I remember to take, it's different. I forgot to tell you and I forgot telling you. The two are correct, but the meaning is different. Okay, so this is obviously another class, a different issue, but it's good for you to to have these ideas because uh, later you might see these topics. For example, when I said, okay, uh, are you ready for the quiz today, everybody? Yeah, I told you yesterday, right? About the test today? No. Did I tell no. you about, no? Okay. No. It's only an example, okay? It's only an example. And then I said, oh, no, I forgot to tell you. You are right, okay? I forgot to tell you. I didn't tell you. You are right. It's my, my, my mistake, okay? I didn't tell you. Forget it. But another situation. 
suppose that I told you yesterday that we have a quiz and it's right now it's uh, 8.45. They say, uh, teacher, what about the test? And I say, what test? You told us yesterday that we had a test today. Did I? Yes, at the end of the class. Oh, yeah. I forgot. In that moment, I forgot telling you. So I forgot that I had told you about that. I forgot that I had given you that information. Okay. So then when you say, I forgot telling, is that you said it, but you don't remember that you said it. Okay. I forgot to tell you is that you were supposed to say something, but somehow you forgot to deliver that information. Okay? You see, that's the difference sometimes when we use these verbs. The same happens with remember. I remember telling you, okay? And I remember to tell you. Okay, what would be in the Spanish, I remember telling you? How would you say that? How would you use that expression in Spanish? Yo recuerdo haberte lo dicho. Correct. And I remember to tell you? Yo recuerdo que te lo dije. Okay, I remember to tell you is, yo recuerdo, de, siempre me recuerdo de decirle. Ah. Okay, I remember to tell him. Okay, I remember to do this. I always remember, I always remember to take the, the keys of my house when I leave in the morning. Okay. So this is something that I always keep in mind. So you see, different meaning, right? So the same thing happens with the others. Okay, but good. Teacher, uh -huh. teacher but yes. this, uh, those phrase, uh, phrases are not common, right? Uh, almost we use the, the infinitive to no, say. No, oh. actually they are. The, the thing is, as a matter of that, uh, in the process that we are learning, probably mm -hmm. we listen or we don't use it because we are in that process. But yeah. for example, suppose that you come to an interview, okay, of a job interview to my mm -hmm. office. And then uh, you, you come and say, yes, well, um, I remember that I told him that, okay, I understand that you are speaking English, your English is good. You know, but if you say, for example, no, I, you know, uh, I remember telling your secretary that I was going to be here at six. Okay, I remember telling, wow, this lady knows, you know, high level uh, structures of English. Okay. So then okay. when you use these expressions, when you use this kind of English, this is structure in English, what you show is that you can manipulate the different structures of the language uh, in different at a high level or more complex okay because you know you can say always this in a different way you know uh i now i am sorry because you know i stopped uh, my my studies uh, when i was a teenager uh, because i didn't like to study ah, okay so uh, you should have studied or you shouldn't have stopped studying when you were a teenager. That's what you mean. Okay, so you see, you can reduce and sounds more organized. We can use basic forms or other language to express the same thing. Okay, so but this one's, these structures will always sound like more complex. Okay, so that's why it's good to practice. Yes? Do you have a barrel list that have the special ing form that changes the meaning actually i do uh, uh, i just have share? to i just can have to i never i never thought you were going to ask about this topic that's why i i don't have it at hand right now but i can i can share it with you like i did today tomorrow oh. i i have to uh there is a material uh where there is a list of verbs followed by ing verbs followed by infinitive verse followed by both and verse uh, followed by both uh, verse followed by both and with the same meaning and verse followed by both and change the meaning 
the verbs that are followed by both forms to infinitive and ing form and change the meaning are less. They are very few. The other ones, yes, they are more extensive. Okay, good. So I will share the list with you and then uh, so that you can have, and you know, if you like to memorize, memorize it, okay? But if you don't, uh, just uh, get one that you like and little by little, introduce those verbs and structures to your uh, uh, everyday spoken speaking is practice okay good now we have uh, let me see here i wanted to okay here remember this this is another thing very important in this video right the the structure subject i you we he or she if you're talking about your brother your sister or a friend you can say she should have a state suppose that your friend quit her job because she was angry and then uh and it was something really silly okay then you say she shouldn't have quit or probably you know you react in a bad we react in a bad way and we insult a person. And then we say, oh, he shouldn't have reacted that way. Okay. Uh, he shouldn't have done that. So you can also, you know, like regret what other people do. You know, because you say it was not correct to do that. So we you should have to speculate about or imagine things that did or didn't happen. Okay. Uh, like the speculations comes, you know, like she should have uh, uh, studied more. She had a future. Okay, she should have uh, uh, waited for, let's say, a couple of months before quitting. Okay, so these are, you know, probably some speculations that we can make. For example... I should have paid attention to what I ate as a kid. Okay. I should have paid attention to what I ate when I was a kid. Because, you know, when we are kids, if we don't eat properly, okay, or we don't grow sufficiently, or we probably get too fat, and then after that is difficult to control our eating habits, okay, they say, but I didn't. Look at this. I should have paid attention to what I ate as a kid, but I didn't, okay? For example, I should have learned more languages when I was a teenager, but I didn't, okay? So then it means that I lost that chance. When you want to describe a hypothetical situation, we need to use this rule, if, plus subject, plus had, plus past participle, comma, subject, plus could, or would have, plus past participle. Remember yesterday I told you that when we were using when, after, uh, when we use when or after or as soon as at the beginning, as soon as I finished the university, comma, I started working. So this situation is the same. When the if close is at the beginning, then we use the common before the second sentence. Okay? And then uh, if we swap, if we switch the order, then uh, we don't use the call. Let's see if they have an example here. Notice the use of could or would have shows what didn't happen. For example, if I hadn't wasted so much money last year, I would have. Okay. If I hadn't wasted so much money last year, that is the conditional sentence. What is the result for wasting so much money? I would have bought my own apartment, but I didn't buy it because... I wasted the money. Okay, so you see here the comma to separate the two sentences. But I can begin the other way. 
I would have bought my own apartment if I hadn't wasted so much money last year. Exactly the same me. Always you can, the two sentences, you can invert the order and the only difference will be the comma. Okay. I bought my own apartment. In other words, I didn't buy the house because I had no money. This is, you know, like, if I hadn't gone to that party last night, I wouldn't have gotten so drunk. Okay. If I hadn't gone to that party last night, uh, or if I hadn't drunk more than two beers, okay, I would have passed the alcohol test. Okay. So we have to be careful, right? Good. So then these are, for example, regrets, okay, to about real life, okay, real things that can happen. Okay, now let's see expressing and describing regrets, more about it. Can you put yourself in the following hypothetical situations? Right here. Now take a look at these sentences. And see, read is each statement, rearrange the regret or hypothetical situation given in order to complete the information. No period is necessary. For example, if I had listened to my parents, I, would have made I would have made. I would. I would. I would. What is after would? I would have, have, have made. Have, have, I would have made. Then the made, made, made. Yes. More. What? More. Decision program. More. Decision. Pragmatic decisions. Pragmatic decisions. Pragmatic decisions because remember that in English we use first the adjective and then the noun, okay? Pragmatic, okay, Pragma, pragmatic decisions, okay? There we go. So we can use this one. I don't wanna show that one. Okay, the next one is, if I had been more active, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be overweight. I wouldn't be overweight. So here you see we're using I wouldn't be in a characteristic of the person. Okay, I wouldn't be a doctor. I wouldn't be a mechanic, you know, like Giovanni was saying before. And they say, I wouldn't be overweight. If I had been, you know, when we are too passive, we don't do exercise, this happens, right? That we get overweight. Good. The next one is, if I had been more ambitious, ambitious, I could have gotten a promotion. I could have gotten a promotion, good. Then you remember the, the order, right? I could have gotten a promotion. Subject, could, plus have, plus the past participle of the verb. I could have gotten a promotion. If I had studied harder in school, I could have learned a lot more. I could have. I could have learned a lot more a lot more okay i could have learned a lot more okay good you say i could have learned a lot more okay always try to to make emphasis 
in the pronunciation of the regular verbs, right? I could have learned, 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 more. Uh -huh, learned, learned. Would be more. Yes. At the beginning, we have to exaggerate so that the articulation works. You know, with the, after with the practice, it would be, you know, I would have learned more. I would have learned a lot more. So then it would be easier for you to pronounce it. Okay, number five, if I had saved money. I wouldn't be as broke as I am now. Yes, you have just described my life. <laughs> okay, then you say, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be. Okay, I wouldn't be as what? As broke as I am now. Yes. Then people say the story of my life. I wouldn't be as broke as I am now. Okay. Six. Oh, no, no, six. Okay, very good. Does, a, does everybody have now the platform activated? Yes. Okay, good. Yes, the chair. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh, I don't know if I told you about the paraphrasing. You know, I always like to to uh, recommend the paraphrasing because it's a way to to practice and to learn uh, the structures. For example, in the first one it says, if I had listened to my parents, if I had listened to my wife, if I had listened to my boss, if I had listened to my, um, like say that to, 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 to to whom to my brother, to my older brother, I would have a I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have gotten that credit in the bank. Okay. So then only you only switch words and verbs to express probably a situation in your life, or maybe a situation that you would like to know how to say it, right? Uh, if I had listened to, let's say, uh, to my, uh, to my heart, right? If I, you know, because sometimes you know we have those feelings. If I had listened to my heart, uh, probably I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be in this problem. Okay, I wouldn't be in this situation. Okay, if I had taken. If I had taken number number two, if I had taken more care of myself, I wouldn't be sick now. Okay, if I had taken care of myself or of my health, I wouldn't be sick now. If I had gone to the doctor uh, on time, I wouldn't be so uh, so ill. Okay, so sick. Sometimes we get sick and we don't go to the doctor. And then after the situation is worse. Okay, so you can practice, you know, uh, using different verbs and different words using these structures. And, oh, this is for pronunciation. So this is another thing that we have to make a lot of emphasis Hi, to wrap up this section, we want you to work on your pronunciation. Please listen and practice. Notice how have and been are reduced in these sentences. I should have been less selfish when I was younger. If I'd been more ambitious, I could have gotten a promotion. You may complete these sentences and practice them in class. Pay attention to the reduced form of have and been. For example, the here the reduction is should have is should have. Should have. Okay, should have and I'd I'd been. I should have, you should have told me. 
Okay, you should have told me before. Okay, why didn't you tell me before? You should have told me before. You should have told me in advance. Okay, you should have you should have informed your superiors. Okay, your uh, supervisors. Okay, you should have a uh, you should have come earlier. Okay, you should have studied more. Hey, you know I got a three in my exam. Okay, you should have studied more. Should have, should have. Okay, no should have. And. Before we, I think there is a. Yes, this is for the transition as well. And see how much you can get. Page 76. Exercise 11. Listening. Regrets. Part A. Listen to people describe their regrets. Complete the chart. 1. Barbara. I always regret that I didn't take typing in high school. I was stupid, really. Once I got to college, I discovered I had to type all my assignments, and I sort of taught myself how to do it. But I can't type half as well as friends of mine who took it in high school. It takes me twice as long to type anything as it takes them. 2. Alex. I should never have stopped exercising. It's the dumbest thing I've ever done. I've been trying to lose weight for the last year and a half, and it's really difficult. I guess I was just like everyone else at my age. I thought I would be thin forever, and I ate junk food all the time. It was okay then because I was playing tennis, hockey, and soccer. Then, after college, I got busy and quit playing sports. But now I'm determined to join a gym because I know I can't get healthy by just dieting. Besides, I love potato chips. 3. Yishan If I'd had a choice, I would have learned to play the guitar when I was a kid. My parents made me study the piano, and I only studied classical music. I love the piano, but it's not very practical. I mean, you can't take a piano with you to a party. But I love it at a party when someone brings a guitar, and they can play songs, and everyone sings along. I wish I could do that. Page 76. Exercise 11. Part B. Listen again. What effect have the regrets had on each person's life? 1. Barbara. I always regret that I... Okay, it's the same thing. Okay, what does Barbara regret? Didn't take typing classes in high school. Didn't take typing classes. The second one, the second one right? Good. Uh, what about Alex? Stopped, Stopped exercising. exercising. Stopped exercising. And Jishan? Didn't, didn't learn, learn to play. play. Didn't learn to play the guitar as a kid. As a kid. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. So that's, you know, the... What was the listening? Okay, so then I will reinforce this with the information I'm going, extra information I will send you. And tomorrow we're going to practice this. So, because I want you to take a look at the uh, sentences that I sent you today in the material too, watch the video. And then so that tomorrow you have ideas on how to discuss this topic. And for tomorrow, how about before we go, Teacher, what yes. did the, the madame mean when she said to wrap up with this section? Excuse me? What did the madame uh, mean when she said to, to wrap up with this section? Wrap up is like when you, uh, for example, 
Uh, that, that's what I'm telling you. Tomorrow we're going to wrap up this. Like uh, I want you to, I ex we explained today. We saw some examples. You were asking some questions, and then uh, tomorrow, okay, I want you to give me some sentences using the regrets, okay, or hypothetical situations, or probably you know using when or after with the time closes, just to and I will and if you have like, the last questions then we are going to close this topic, okay? Make sure that you have understood uh, the, the topic and when and how to use each of those uh, topics, right? If it is a time close, if it is for describing yourself, okay? Or if it is a hypothetical situation or if it is a regret. So tomorrow we're gonna make sure that you have understood this. And then that is to wrap up, to close the to circle. Close, close. Mm -hmm, to, close, right. to close the circle. Okay, just let me check the, the attendance, right? So here we have uh, Francisco Antonio is here, right? Present teacher. Yes, we have uh, Giovanni, Hector yes, Ivan. Present teacher. Yes, Ivan Ibrahim. Yes, I see you there. Joel Emanuel. No, right. Jorge Alberto. Present teacher. Yes, Joselino. Yes, he's here. Present. Julio Cesar. Also, Julius. Then we have. Okay, Julio Cesar and Carla Selena. Nice so Carla, Carla. Present teacher. Oh, yes, the other one is Carla Rene. Okay. Teacher. Then we have Catherine. Present teacher. Yes, Catherine is here too. And then we have Luis Eduardo. Present teacher. Okay, Marlene. Yes, is here. Present teacher. Melissa. I haven't seen Melissa today. Present. Oh, Present. Yes, there you are. yes, here you are. Neftali is here too. Yes, Present Neftali. Teacher. Yeah. Oscar Alexander. Oscar. Present teacher. Present. Yes. yes. And Oscar Abdulio, of course, is here too. Romeo Vladimir. Present. Okay. Sarah Elizabeth. Present. Okay. Then we have Sofia. Present. Okay, yes. And then we have Wendy. Wendy, 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 I saw you early. Yes, there. Present. There you are, Wendy. Xiomara. Present. Okay, good. And Jenny. Perfect. Okay, good. Then, uh, well, for tomorrow, study that. And... We're going to close it with the reading. But we will also have, basically the topic of tomorrow is about infinitives and gerunds, producers of purpose, okay? For example, we have, Hi, welcome. Join us in this new section. We're about to explain that we can describe how something is used by either an infinitive or a gerund. Notice the meaning is the same. Pay attention and stay with us. Infinitives and gerunds for uses and purposes. Infinitives. I use my computer to send emails. Computers are often used to pay bills. Gerunds. I use my computer for sending emails. Computers are often used for paying bills. As said in our intro video, we will study infinitives and gerunds to express use and purposes. Keep in mind the meaning doesn't change. What changes is the structure. So let's go over the explanation on the difference between the two forms. With an infinitive, we must use to plus verb. Example, I use my cell phone to call my friends. To call my friends is the purpose. With a gerund, we must use for plus verb plus ing. Example, I use my cell phone for calling my friends. 
for calling my friends is the purpose. Notice on both examples, the purpose or use is the same. It is also important for you to notice when using infinitives, we must use the particle to before the verb. And when we use gerunds, we use the word for. You can't say, I use my computer to sending emails, nor I use my computer for send emails. Okay, so you see, this is uh, what we were uh, talking about, right? Uh, on how to how to use the verbs when they have the same meaning, different meaning. And this is the list that I will send you uh, tomorrow during the day so that you can take a look before we uh, we start the class. Okay, so you see, this is a very extensive course in especially in vocabulary. And more than structures, the vocabulary that you have to in in different details and rules. Okay, so study for tomorrow. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow here at the same time. I always connect. Remember, seven fifty. In case you have questions before, you can perfectly connect, and we can talk about these issues. Right. So have a very good night. And Thank you, teacher. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Okay. Thank you, teacher. See you tomorrow. Bye. 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 Bye.